Okay, here we're looking at niche or niche and competition. So niche is referring to the pattern of living and these organisms and species are all interacting and have different patterns of living are all in competition for a limited amount of resources. So how these kind of interrelate is very important to an ecosystem. So looking at communities, let's first define a community. Well, all organisms that live together in an area are defined as a community. Keep in mind, it can be a little hard to define because like what type of area or what size or scale of area are we talking about? But for communities, the different species uh, compete and cooperate with each other to make a community stable. A community is often identified by the presence of a dominant species. The distribution of other organisms may greatly differ. However, the ranges of all organisms overlap. We see that here with our trees and our shrubs and our ferns and our salamanders, all kind of overlapping one another as part of this, these communities. Now, this niche and competition, well, a niche is a particular biological role of an organism in a community. This is not to be confused with habitat. So habitat is a place. A niche is a, referred to as a pattern of living. So we see all these different birds' beaks have different niches, different patterns of living that can help them consume unique food items. So habitat versus niche, a good comparison between the two. Well, habitat is a portion of an ecosystem occupied by a particular organism. It's a physical place, and it reflects the living place of an organism. A niche, on the other hand, is the role of an organism in that ecosystem. So the role is a function or activity and it reflects the biotic and abiotic associations with the environment. So comparing habitat to niche, come in, this is like the physical place, and this is a function or activity. So when we're kind of looking at environment now, habitat and niche, we kind of see this um, stacking doll effect here. So the environment is the overarching thing, and that's everything surrounding an organism. That's the air, the rocks, the water, um, all of that is the environment. A little bit smaller than that, a little bit more specific, would be the habitat. Remember, this is a physical place. It's the area in the environment where organisms grow and survive. This could be the ocean habitat, the uh, forest habitat, the Arctic. That's a portion of the total environment. Within that habitat, there's a smaller portion here, where we're over here, where we're looking at the portion of the habitat where the living organism makes its home. So. This is referring to that living that's that part of that habitat, part of that physical place, and it's how the interaction is occurring. So competition is a struggle of two organisms to use the same resources. Remember, resources are limited. Here we see individuals competing for mates in competition. There's a limited number of amount of food, water, and mates, and this is resulting in often competition that occurs amongst animal species. Now, there's two different types of competition. There's intra-specific competition, which occurs between individuals of the same species here. So intra is between the same species, the same single species. Inter-specific competition occurs between individuals of different species. So here we see the lion and the hyena. These are different uh, species here. This is inter-specific competition. Here we see two flamingos competing. This is intra-specific um, competition. Now there's a fundamental versus realized niche. Because of competition, organisms may not be able to occupy their fundamental or theoretical niche. This is where an organism can live. So a fundamental niche is referring to where an organism can live. We see this rock here. We see these barnacles and um, organisms living on this rock. Well, the fundamental niche is um, where an organism might be able to survive. However, this is often not the case. Just because an organism can live there doesn't mean it does live there. Instead, organisms often occupy what's called their realized or their actual niche. This is where the organism actually lives. So some of these organisms, for example, let's take the light brown one here, and kind of the blue one. The light brown one may be able to live on this entire intertidal zone. This is the high tide mark, and then as the tide goes out, this is the low tide mark. So this brown um, organism may be able to live over the entire rock. However, it gets outcompeted from this white to gray and this blue one. So therefore, its realized niche, or its actual niche where it lives, is on the um, just below the high tide line. The fundamental niche could be for the entire um, intertidal zone here. But its realized, or its actual niche here, is just near the high tide line. Contrast to that, the um, blue and green, uh, kind of some of the pinks, they also may be able to live over this entire rock, but they may be outcompeted here. 
they may need to have a little bit more moisture, a little bit more water. Therefore, their realized niche is here uh, very close to the low tide mark. So this in interspecific um, competition with only one winner, we see an example here of blue and red. We have two different species competing. So we see initially they all start off, and then slowly the species one, the red species, starts to outcompete species two. And we see over time the blue species actually gets pushed out entirely. And only the red species one survives. Also in that picture here, where we see the brown living with the white, whilst for whatever reason the white can outcompete the brown and it gets pushed out, and therefore there's only one winner in this interspecific competition. A competitive exclusion can partly explain this. Uh, no two species with the same niche can coexist. So we see, we'll just call it uh, blue species here, and we have a tan orange species here. When they're grown separately, we see one lives here, one lives here, different carrying capacities, that's okay, but both living and able to uh, survive. Uh, they all grew alone in different culture tubes. This is them, just how they grow normally, all isolated. Now, though, we add something different. So this is competitive exclusion. We're now taking these and we're mixing the populations. So we're mixing the blue species here with the tan orange species. So we notice that there's a decline or extinction here of the tan or orange species uh, when the two share the same culture tube. So because the two have different realized niches, thus they avoid competition when they're able to coexist. But when they're mixed together here, we see that one species can outlive the other, can outcompete the other um, for food or resources. Due to that competition, the overall carrying capacity is reduced, and if it was just grown alone, but we see that that mixed population very closely resembles the blue species compared to the tan or orange species here. Hopefully this helps explain a little bit of niche and competition that occurs in ecosystems all over the world.